Hello, welcome back to Next Program and another devlog for Keeper, the adventure game I'm making. This game changes genres like every week, but I'm pretty sure it's an RPG now. Anyways, in the last episode we added the lava biome and the basics for dungeons in the world. This time we're going to add in a bunch of different things to make the world more fleshed out. This includes some new animals and enemies, along with a few mechanics that will be used in puzzles. Here's the game plan for this episode. The world needs to be full of different creatures, so the player will be excited to explore the map and its different biomes. I kinda like bees, so I'll try to add some of those in the game, along with some snails. But not just ordinary snails, these will be giant snails. Then I think I'll add some giant frogs and dragons or something and we'll be good to go. So I just added a couple new things. It's been a long wait, I know, but the bees have finally arrived. These yellow ones are your standard bee you'd find on Earth, but there are also some cool elemental bees depending on the biome. For example, fire bees. I'm thinking they'll probably be passive enemies, and you'll be able to take their honey to use for crafting. The other new thing is a chest. These will be scattered around the world and you'll be able to find some cool stuff in them. I've also been working on designing the area you start in when you first begin the game. Here's what it looks like so far. I like the idea of the player starting in the middle of a maze of trees. This way you can learn the mechanics like crafting without getting overwhelmed by a million different paths to explore before you've gotten used to it. I also made some updates to the tile set, and we have some cliffs that break up the environment. These were actually really annoying to draw, but I'm happy with them now. And here they are, the giant snails. I don't know why they decided to be so fast, but I choose not to question it. I think it looks kind of funny, so it's staying in. Due to popular request, I also added an even bigger giant snail, so thanks for the suggestion. There's also a new floating cookie item that you can eat to restore health. But with all these new snails and bees, I think it's time we took another look at our enemy system. I'm working on an intuitive way to spawn in mobs, like snails or slimes, so I set up a system where I can specify what I want to spawn and how many, and the script I wrote takes care of everything for me. Now I'll set it to random so you can see how it works. This time I enter the area and two snails and a slime spawn in. The next time I come in, it's another combination, this time just three snails. I think it works perfectly, and it's pretty easy to make changes to it. I've also been spending some time doing stress testing, as we say in the industry, you know, testing the limits of what the system can produce, um, and I definitely wasn't just messing around. But there you have it, flawless enemy spawning. Well, that's good enough at least. I want to take this chance to finish up something I missed in the combat episode. Go watch that after if you haven't already. I never really worked on enemies damaging the player, but now when that happens, we get a nice flashing animation to show you've been damaged, and it plays a sound effect. You can't hear the sound effect in this video, but just trust me, it's there. And when you watched the last clip, you were probably thinking this is a grass slime, since it's green. Well that's where you're wrong. This isn't a grass slime, it's a glass slime. Look, you can see right through it. I think this effect looks pretty cool, so get ready to see me using it all over the place in this game. He definitely has some issues he needs to work out though. He started doing this, and then he was doing this for a while, but I think he's behaving himself now. While I was working on the enemies again, I was just thinking about what other enemies there could be, and I ended up getting the idea for this fire elemental. I threw together this particle effect, and I think it's kind of interesting to have an enemy that looks like this. Now every time I add a new particle system into Keeper, I get 20 million comments from people telling me that it doesn't fit the style of the rest of the world. But just trust me, once there are a bunch of different particle systems scattered around, you'll understand the style I'm going for. It'll all make sense. That being said, the fire elemental probably won't look like this forever, but I do think it's an interesting look. I started working on something a little bit different. I just made a type of wall that blocks your path, but it can be deactivated when I press a key on the keyboard. I might make something more natural looking for the overworld, like turn this into an iron gate or some boulders or something, but we'll see. But I just added in a button, and when you press it, it sends a signal to the wall to turn off the sprite and the collider, so that lets you walk through it. I think this will be a useful mechanic for the dungeons. Speaking of dungeons, I made another thing that could be included in the puzzles. I just added these green blocks that can be pushed around by the player, sort of like a slide block puzzle. But it looks kind of jerky right now, so I need to fix that. So that's done, and I like how it's working now. I also started working on the dungeon tile set to see how it'll actually look in context. It'll probably get some tweaks in the future, but it's alright for now. Switching gears a bit, I decided I want to work on the dialogue system next. I started by letting the player interact with a signpost. When you're too far away you can't do anything, but once you get closer you can read what it has to say. I wrote some code that creates dialogue speakers that can send text to the dialogue panel. So what I can do now is write some text in here, and it'll show up in the game spoken by a character. 
I wanted to make some other interesting characters for the player to talk to, so I made these two frog dudes. I'm actually really happy with how these two turned out, and I think they look pretty cool. So I pulled them into Unity, and they fit in the world nicely. I also decided to make the dialogue appear in a box that comes up from the bottom, instead of just hovering above the object like I had before. Now for some polishing. With the power of asynchronous programming, the text now gets typed onto the screen gradually instead of just appearing all at once. And you can talk to the penguins now too. Here's the new grass penguin outside his new igloo. I just gave him an animation so he kind of hops around when he's not doing anything. I don't think this game would really be complete without dragons, so here they are. You can find this big sleeping green one, and also this pink one. I'm happy with how these ones turned out too. But that sign sitting there was giving me more ideas for the dialogue system, so I added some sound that makes it a little nicer. And this one's like really random, but I thought a big starfish would be something cool to add. So now we have this dude who kind of tries to kill you if you touch him. In the next video, I'll be doing a lot more world building and maybe some lore, so you better subscribe if you haven't already. Oh yeah, also like the video, and comment any ideas you have for Keeper. If you're interested, you can also join the Discord community, link in the description. I've been working on an RPG monster catching bot that you can try out there if you'd like. So thanks for watching and for all the support, and see you next time. Bye.